All right, everybody. This is Nash here. And go ahead and wake on up. It's game day. We got the Texas Longhorns on FS1 at 2.30 to play the Kansas Jayhawks. Now, we are on the road playing in Lawrence, Kansas. It's going to be a cold one if you're out there. 38 degrees. Now, at least you will have the sun out there. So that is something nice. But this is going to be a preview video. We're going to be talking about Texas versus Kansas, looking at some stats, looking at some players to watch. And I'm not planning on it right now, but maybe, 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 maybe we'll get a prediction in. But don't forget to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about the Texas Longhorns heading on the road to play the Kansas Jayhawks. And also in that comment section, you can find Underdog Fantasy. They're our new sponsor. You can find some really cool fun prop bets right here. I have Quinn Ewers. And Bijan Robinson, I like that Bijan. I've, I've already said it before. I like that Bijan Robinson 20.5. Head on over to Underdog Fantasy. Use code Nash. Get your dollar. Get your first deposit dollar for dollar match up to a hundred dollars, 100% guaranteed. And without further ado, let's just head right on into it. So looking at the offensive points per game, or head right back to these old school style of the draft. Not old school style. This is old school because we're heading back to it. But it's a newer graphic that I did that people liked. Kansas, they got the edge on us and the points per game. They have been an offensive team. And you're going to see that this is a it's a theme that continues with looking at these little advanced stats, metrics. Offensive yards per play. Kansas, they edge us out. We once were the top dog in the Big 12. And not only one of the top dogs of the Big 12, but top dogs of all of college football. Now Kansas is that. 7.0. That is among the best, if not tied for the best in college football. 6.2. It's not amazing, but it's still nothing to scoff at. But it, I think what goes to show is it's, fall, it's fallen for Texas. So in the last three, it really has not been that great. You go to the offensive third down per, uh, conversion percentage. Oh, that is just, I mean, and the, the the Texas team on both on both ends is, it's just, it's third down, we got to get better. We have to get better. Have to, have to, have to. It's got, something's got to change. And I think it's that, this is, this statistic right here is what's keeping Texas' defense. I know we're looking at the offense. But this statistic, I think, is the one that's keeping our defense from being really just like, without a doubt, top five, top ten defense in all of college football. Red zone, offensive red zone conversion percentage. Kansas is punching the ball in frequently. They are. When they get in the red zone, they put that ball in there. Now, we had a team, I think it was Oklahoma State recently, that was very similar to this, or no, it was Kansas State. Well, Kansas, another Kansas school. The Kansas schools are they're doing they're doing a very well very good job of putting the ball in the end zone. Now Texas, fifty nine point five. We got to get that better. Have to, have to, have to. I mean, at a certain point, we just we got to start taking the we got to start getting six on the board instead of three. You know. It's a big, it's a big, it's a small thing, but it compounds. Now going over the defense, this is where, we, like I said, we saw all like you. Just a quick refresher: green for Kansas, green for Kansas, green for Kansas, green for Kansas. And if you haven't figured it out by now, green means they're better, red means you're worse. So they have the advantage over us in all the statistics, all the advanced statistical categories that we just showed. Kansas has the advantage. Well, what about the defense? It's flipping. You got defensive red zone t uh, touchdown conversion percentage, 55.6 per Kansas. That's not that bad. But Texas at 48.5. Worry. Worry. I think it's like top 10 right there. So this team, when they get down into the red zone, they do not allow a lot of touchdowns. And this is, this is one of the things right here. Pete Kwiatkowski. Okay, this is his defense. This is what the defense was predicated on. 
It was, it's always been a, we're going to give you a ton of stuff. We're going to give you a ton of yards. You might win and we, you know, yards per game, we might look horrible in, right? But you ain't going to score the ball. You just aren't, you're not going to score. Good luck trying. And we're starting to see that with the PK defense. So hopefully this can continue and compound. And I, if we can keep seeing this, from Texas defenses in years to come, I, I'm really I'm I'm gonna be thralled with I'm already am, but PK, he's proven it right now. Now defensive red zone or not, defensive third down conversion percentage, sorry. Texas. We now I, I did say we're lacking in this. And kinda of talking out my butt now, looking like it. But the important thing to remember here is just because we're better does not mean that Kansas is good. They're very low in a lot of these defensive statistical categories. So Texas in this third down conversion percentage, it's not a good number. We're not that high. We're in like the 70s range, 60s range, high 60s, low 70s. It's something that needs to improve and – Hopefully we can see it because this is a good offensive team and it'll be a good test. Defensive yards for play, we're not allowing a lot of yards for play. Like, I think this is a top 10 yards for play number right here. Kansas, they're not that bad, but nowhere near what Texas is. Apologize if you just heard my dog. So now we're on the defensive points per game. Kansas at 32.7 points allowed on average. 21.3 21.3 for Texas. This led me to something. I wanted to, I, normally this is where I stop and I go and I show, I say, okay, we've, we've concluded here with the stats. Let's head over to uh, the players to watch. And you go to the average scoring margin. That's, I, I, I immediately saw that and I'm like, okay, so Kansas, they're playing a lot of close games. And they are. At 2.1 Scoring average scoring margin, Texas. It looks like we're a lot better at plus uh, twelve point two. But and ignore the colors on this because it's going to go wrong. Texas is worse. And the last three, when you go down to the last three and the scoring margin, average scoring margin. First off, both teams are in the negative twos, but negative two point three for Texas. Let's go ahead. Let's go out there. Let's get a solid game in. And leave nothing to doubt, and get that scoring margin back to where it needs to be, especially against a school. And I, when I say a school like Kansas, I'm just purely talking about the reputation. If we, if Texas were to lose this game, just hop off social media for a few days. Now we're heading into the players to watch. Jalen Daniels. This was a kind of a shocker this week. You know, there was like a, a tweet that was put out that he may play, and then it was like deleted. Then, yeah, but may return to play versus Texas. This guy, he can be very dangerous on the ground. He's averaging like 5.8 yards per carry. You'll see in a second, that's not even their best running quarterback. I mean, these dudes, they got some quarterbacks that, that can move the ball on the ground. He was injured in game six versus TCU. Uh, he did have a uber efficient day versus uh duke i mean and yeah granted it's just duke but he he's had he's shown the capability to be an efficient passer so we'll see we'll see how much he plays if he does play but moves on moves me on to my second point jason dean or jason bean uh tongue twister right here but i'm thinking this guy's gonna play no matter what at some point he's gonna play He's going to get in there, whether it's just for a drive or two, whether it's just to give Jalen uh, Jalen Daniels, I was mind fart right there, just to like a, a play or two off, just to rest his legs or something, whatever it is, he's going to play. 14-4 to four touchdown to interception ratio, stepping in as a starter. He's been, I mean, it's, it's really sad that they've lost the games because he's done very well, uh, statistically at least, but... Rushing ability, 6.6 yards per carry. This is not a guy that you can just forget about. Not at all. 
And then Devin Neal. You know, this, this Texas defense, they have faced a stretch of running backs, have they? I mean, look at the last, like, Kendra Miller, okay? you already we, we already know that guy now. I mean, granted it was mainly one run, but still. That, that guy, he did, he still did have a good game on the ground versus a very good Texas defense. I'm a big fan of that guy now. I'll open my eyes a lot. And then you also got Deuce Vaughn. I mean, th- these these Texas this Texas Rusty they're 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 gasping. They're they're sitting there saying, "Man, can we get a breath, please?" But 414 yards in the last two games, 6.8 yards per carry. This dude, he, they call him, this is this is what they call breakaway yardage percentage. 53.3 percent breakaway yards. Uh, that's a 15 yard run. At least, oh, I mean, over. Think about that. Over half of his runs are going for fifteen plus yards. And this isn't like a. Uh, oh, I'm talking about Jonathan Brooks with a low. And I'm a I'm a huge Jonathan Brooks fan. I'm not throwing this out there as a negative. Okay, don't get that twisted. But this isn't me throwing this out there saying, okay, this is a small sample size. We still. This is not a small sample size. I mean, sure, it's not Bijan's 200 rushing attempts, but this is over 100 rushing attempts, and half of those have gone for 15-plus yards. This is a dude that, I mean, he can bust them on you, and we got to watch out for that. Heading over to the Texas guys. Can he bounce back? Come on, Quinn Ewers, get, give us something. We, we saw a little bit of a little bit versus Kansas State after the Oklahoma State. Give us something versus Kansas. Come on. It's a lackluster defense. Get this bounce back. One of 21 on targeting worthy plus on 30 plus yards. I do not want to see another deep ball. <laughs> I don't. I Like at this point, I'm sick of it. I don't want to see it. Get rid of it. Toss it out the playbook, Sark. Just forget about it. Bug it about it. But another sub 50 plus uh, 50% day. Oklahoma State versus, and then also TCU. Let's, let's get a nice bounce back week here for Quinn Ewers. And then we're, we're heading over, we're taking a trip to the defense. I, I, I'm not going to, I wasn't going to go all season without giving this guy some love. Keandre Coburn, number 99. Bit, I mean, <laughs> that is a big dude down there in the trenches. He's played himself into a fringe first-round draft pick candidate. Uh, he's an average depth of tackle is 1.3 yards down the line of scrimmage, so uh, past the line of scrimmage. So, I mean, guys, they're not getting they're not getting far. Uh, he is this guy. He's been a huge reason why the Texas rush defense has been so good. He's been a huge reason why the Texas defense has been so good. It's been a huge reason on why we get so many pressures. Because he's literally eating up blocks with how big he is. Six foot two, three hundred and forty three pounds. That is a big, large human. Keandre Coburn, you deserve all the flowers in the world. The development that we've seen from him is just this is this is what we've been wanting to see at Texas. And it's so nice to finally see it. Keandre Coburn, I'm so so happy for the guy. I wish nothing but nothing but the best for that guy. And then Jalen Ford, number 41. Oh, my Lord. Jalen Ford. I mean, there was so there were some people that, you know, it was Jalen Ford was one of these names that you either believed in him or you were uh, maybe, you know, maybe uh, let's not let's not do that yet. Well, for those that believed in him, kudos, kudos. Jalen Ford, number 41, leading tackler on the team. Go ahead, get the teenage giggles out. 69 tackles. He's the leading run tackler with 44 tackles in the run game. Average depth of tackle in the run game is 3.5 yards. There's n- it. It's no coincidence that it, that's within point two of the Texas rush defense average. I mean, this dude, Jalen Ford, I, I hate to say it, he's probably gone to the draft. I, I wish it wasn't the case. I hope we get him back. I really do. I mean, I prom—I promise you, I will be doing 
I'll be running up and down my street, screaming up and down if we get Jalen Ford back another year. He is that important. This guy, I cannot wait to see him play more. I mean, this is this is an obvious player to watch, especially when you got this guy, this guy, and this guy going up against you. These guys, they can all run. So watching this rush defense, that's we're going to need these guys to come through. And a uh, little shout out to my my boy Duke there. And then uh, don't forget, head on down to Underdog Fantasy Football and uh, check out some of those prop bets. All right, everybody. Hope you all have a great day. And let's get the Kansas prediction. I almost forgot. I almost forgot the Kansas prediction. Uh, I'm not really going to give a number, but I'm just going to say I think that I think this. I, I hate to hedge because this. I. I really. I. I this. This game is either close or it's just going to be an absolute domination blowout. One team does. I and I don't know. I don't. I honestly. I couldn't tell you. That's why I really didn't want to give a prediction. Is I just have no confidence in this week. Last week, I was so. I. I mean, like I cannot tell you through the moon confidence. That we were going to just destroy TCU. The defense showed up. The offense didn't. Felt that way versus OU. Felt that way even... Ver- I Like, there were multiple games where I felt this way. Where I felt confident to give a prediction. I don't feel confident this week. But I do feel confident enough to say it's either going to be a very close game. Or it's just going to be an absolute blowout. And if it's a blowout, I hope we're on the right side of that. <laughs> All right, everybody, hope you all have a great day. And let's cheer on those Longhorns. Welcome.